Welcome back to Pops and Pilots. Let's play some more European Missiles 4 with Semyon. Right over here, which in what looks or used to be Ethiopia, I suppose. Uh, we're going for the Shemot, is not achievement. Uh, we have to convert all of Egypt to Judaism, which unfortunately is not unfortunately Ottomaniac, which that's gonna be fun, isn't it? But anyway, that's future me's problem. What is going on right now? I checked in between episodes on our missions because uh, we did complete subjugate heathens and the next step in there is to, well, eat up those subjugated heathens. Country has diplomatically annexed every heathen vassal is what the tooltip says. And this was very unclear to me what that actually means in game terms. So... Does it mean I need to not have any heathen vassals? Does it mean there's somehow a trigger for diplomatic annexation? Rather than, say, losing the land or whatever. Um, that counts. Do I need more? I, I didn't really know. So I checked in the um, actual game files and uh, that just says I have no vassal that has the heathen vassal heathen vassal flag now, i didn't check further on what that means when you actually get it it might just be things you had in the previous mission here um that's kind of what it suggests but either way if we have these folks are next then that mission should be done and we get 150 dip and 20 prestige for it which is nice and we can also consider uh, continue going down here once we are great power and uh, get some extra some extra admin out of it. Uh, interesting that these are all Horn of Africa. I mean, I guess it makes sense that these are Horn of Africa missions because we had the Horn of Africa. Right. <laughs> kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, 50 provinces owned that are in the Horn of Africa region. So this is just keep going ham. Take it. Rabbi Loyalty 75. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. What do I get for this? Nothing. Oh no, a stab. I mean, I want it, but... Oh, missionary strength, I want that. So maybe we should consider not grabbing stuff of the rabbis next time. I don't quite know how we get them to 75 loyalty because our equilibrium is 58. Can add another five for the diet, so we're at um, 63, but we're still missing 12. Then, yeah, need to hit a good mission or something. Not mission, uh, a good event. I do want to get my stab up, but I think conversion wants to come first. Let's just start on pausing. I think that's going to be quite all right. Oh, yeah, I remember we have um, the our subject being loyal and disloyal. Flickering up and down, thanks to the game being weird. Mm, let's sort by unity and find ourselves a nice compromise like Go Jam here. Relatively low conversion timer compared to these, but high unity gain for the time spent. So essentially, you're looking for unity divided by time to convert, and you want that number to be high. Sure, money is a factor too, but that's sort of secondary here. Uh, so yeah, the relationship of unity and time to convert is great in GoJam, so we do GoJam, and after that, Wolo Low, uh, which are convinced, conveniently enough in the same state, which saves us some money on edicting. Uh, GoJam, get converted. Fire. Uh, Innovator, no longer needs to be missionarized and these Andorians here they did catch up while they were being converted but now their unrest is relatively low might have a chance of the Dongolans still being the first ones to fire yeah I mean a good chance there's still a chance that the other ones fire but that's rather low uh, you know uh, spent the prestige unfortunately wait why is my oh it's power protection I want my legitimacy Still high. Here we're losing one from negative stab, but that's all right when you have infinite gain. It's not actually infinite, but lots of gain. 
Uh, how are you looking? It's dropping down very slowly. I think I want to put a tiny, teeny bit of money into corruption rooting out. Yeah, it seems about fine. It's a balance of getting the... Um, making use of our passive reduction and not sitting at high overall um, corruption. This dip power is going to have to be spent. And it's not going to be spent on tech. Not anytime soon. So unfortunately, we're going to have to spend some on development, I think. It's the only thing that really makes sense here. Uh, development. Even though it's freakishly expensive. And I think it's our gold mine. Damod is not super cheap to develop, but it's not much more expensive than other places. And at least it's gold. Now, obviously, developing gold mines is a it's a risky endeavor because you have a chance of gold mines depleting and losing half the production. And the more you put in there, the higher the chance of depleting is. So not only do you have more to lose because you put more development into it, but also there's a higher chance of that. Um, actually happening but I think putting a bit in here is still still okay now the downside is that you get more the more reliance on gold mines you have so the bigger part of your income is gold mine income um, the more inflation you get from it you can see here probably somewhere that we get 0.07 inflation a year from gold which is not particularly fun is it but money though that's 2.25 ducats we get from money. I mean, look at that income. We have what, two gold mines, I think. I think like we picked up another one. We have Demot. Oh no, the other one is in Kafa, which is our subject. So that's pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. Are you actually producing two ducats? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Well, that's just pretty, pretty crazy. Per the crazy. Now we're gonna need another war suit. Oh, there's still a Lodia left, technically. So you might wanna grab claim on them at some point. Not that that's particularly interesting land or anything, but it is land, and could be mine. Army organizer is dead. I think that's currently okay. I mean, the organizer wasn't strong. Ooh, we have reduced military advisor costs, so I suppose I'm just going to grab Caleb here. We're making enough dosh that we can afford to have somebody run our armies there. I'm kind of interested in going up to force limit again. But there might be better ways to spend my money right now. Which I don't have a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, you changed the capital again? Twice? <laughs> I mean, we already had them move their capital from somewhere up here. Was it Gondor before? I think so to Arsi in the middle of the war when we had occupied the capital. I don't know how you move it then, but hey. Um, but now they moved it within 10 days to Jinjiro and then to Hadiya. <laughs> and I know it's been pointed out that they have some sort of event to move it, but that seems excessive. Hmm. <laughs> War. I didn't know they went bankrupt. How's that shows again? 1504? No, 1509. That's a long time. So they're probably going to be dead by the time we get to them. It's pretty much what it feels like, at least. 
I mean, being bankrupt. Interestingly, they didn't lose anything to... Oh no, I beat up Kaffa. Well, Kaffa was in the war against them, right. Did Hafun just change from being a Dalian to being Ajurani? Or was it just vision changing? What just happened here? It is 1499, so no, it did just change hands. Must have been just vision, yeah, yeah. That's another claim on a thing I already have. <laughs> Since when's that a thing? I'm confused. If I were to come in and take out the Medbarians, the Allied to Anisa and Mercuria, none of which are people, I don't think. Mercuria isn't certainly not people. What about Anisa? Um, oh, it's you over there. No, so neither of these are people. You... I don't think Cobalt Lutherans here is particularly interesting. So I could just go beat up Mirabari. <laughs> All these terrible places. Look at Beja here. Who could actually potentially be vassalized? Hmm. Once we have control of Meribari land, we might get a diplomatic vassalization on these folks. Now, if we do that, then we'd have to convert them to, or to annex them to, for our mission. But I mean, that's shouldn't be a huge problem. We, of course. Oh. Now, unfortunately, two of these scores are ones I would have to take to get to them, unless I go the Dongola route, which I could. And the other two cores are ones that are in the Mamluks, who I don't want to fight. Hmm. What about the Dongola route instead? They have no friends. Well, Miklov, who I have claims on. This would be a way to get into Miklov without fighting QQ. I also need to keep this in mind. I have three things with it now. Well, I did before I took land. That's not Renaissance anymore, but this is gonna come back up. So I certainly should consider hitting a golden era at some point. I am kind of tempted by a Dongolan war. Maybe after the Dongolan separatists come up? Don't know if I would be able to cross over to Miklov without calling it a Dal. Probably wouldn't be able to cross from a Dal to Mokka here without a naval presence. Hmm. But I could probably just call in a Dal, right? I could, yeah. Do they have any interest in Miklavian land? No. Well, that's actually not. They have no claims. Also no interest. Actually, do have... Ooh. Age ending. That gives me... Well... Makes me consider... Not taking Dongolan land right away. Because we currently have the institution spreading through Butana and Al Qadarif. And if I take more land here, it will not have Renaissance going on. And therefore, I won't be able to hit the Golden Age. And it's probably good for me to hit the Golden Age in the Age of Discovery, because if I remember correctly, the Age of Reformation is annoying. We're not going to join the Reformation. We will probably have religious ideas. We will convert provinces. We could convert another nation. So it's doable. It's doable. Maybe I don't need to rush the age while we don't have a huge war at our hands. Yeah, that's probably right. So that means nobody's stopping me from, well, <laughs> 
from grabbing Dongola land necessarily. Yeah, well, I can't click the code button on Mikkel there, but I feel like we do this. Wait, what claim is that? The calf and war go to take Bayuda. Huh. That's conquest, it's not reconquest. So Kafa has a claim on Bayuda. Even has a claim on Midribari up there. Huh, Tr interesting. What a weird subject. Um, I don't think I'm gonna give them Bayuda. That's weird. Be weird to do. Hmm. Don't go to not Jazeera. Let's wait for the. What do we need? Thirty. I think we need thirty here. It's not going to be huge or anything to get a claim on Shendi. But I think it's fine. We have a lot of aggressive expansions still taking down. Also, we have these separatists, which I already forgot about. I mean, I say a lot of aggressive expansion. Very limited amount of people who care. Oof. Artillery combat ability. Maybe a bit early with that, friend. Mm, no. No. I would be interested in a missionary strength boy. But that does not seem to be in the cards right now. Looming disaster. Number of provinces in revolt. I have a province in revolt. No, I don't. Never mind. I just uh, saw these things right away. So, not enough unity and less than zero stab. Okay, so this is a reason to stab up, I suppose. And probably stab up immediately. Because that's not gonna stop. I know why it just started. I can stop it with having no unrest in my country. That seems unlikely. I think I do stab up. It is unfortunate. And waiting for Gojam is certainly technically an option. But no, I don't think the disaster ticks are worth it. I think I'm just gonna bite the whatever. Apple? What do you bite? Anyway, I'm gonna bite the thing to get to zero here. So at least we only have the plus one progress from Unity. And then, I mean, ideally we get... Huh? Did it go away? Why did it go away? What did I miss? I mean, I have unrest, right? I mean, we don't have stability less than zero anymore, but... Hmm. Didn't think it would have ended. Hmm. Oh, what? Oh, well. Um, now, this is probably not worth. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, we can technically wait till next year, right? Yeah. I probably forget. Wait. Tech 11.9 was reached first, 14 in the 2nd of November, 14.99. No, never mind, I can't wait till next year. I just didn't have the dip earlier to take it. And that's why it just popped up. Okay, so this is not going to be something we take. I don't think. 65 words. 65% is just so much, right? To pay for four innovativeness? So if we get out our calculator and we uh, do 600 times 0 0.65, that's 390 dip points we'd be paying for 
for innovativeness. For innovativeness. Now, for innovativeness, let me not screw this up, are 0.4% all power costs, right? Or 0.004 all power costs. 0.004 all power costs. So, really? 0.04? think so. If my math is correct, we'd have to spend uh, almost 100,000 monarch points before we make that back. And it's quite possible my math is off here. But 100,000 monarch points are a lot of monarch points to spend. I don't think I go for it. Yes, it's dip. And the fact that it dips, that it's dip makes it interesting. But I don't think so. What about the next institution though? Um, <laughs> it's colonialism, uh, which could spawn, not for us, could spawn and then we could develop it, but we don't know when, we don't know how well people have been doing with um, exploration. Probably good enough though. That probably is going to be some European that has some American province, right? So, yeah, I think we're going to sit on our dip as well as we can and wait for the spawn of the institution. And then we're probably going to get it developed down here because it's going to take forever to get to us anyway. And that's going to be a better use of that dip than buying a few points of innovativeness. As much as I have kind of um, converted, I suppose, to considering taking tech out of time for innovativeness with the changes in Leviathan, doubling turns out is good. Take something that's not very good and you double it, uh, it might be good now. Uh, Shindy. Now, technically, I think we could declare for the Beryudan, uh, for the Don Golden War Golden Beryuda, right? Because we can still take the ones that we have claims on. While uh, the other way around, we don't get to take Beryuda. I should be able to call through my subject on the same continent, right? So potentially I could give Bayuda to my subject and take Dongola for myself. And maybe Wadi Halfa. I think that's technically possible. I don't know if I want it, but there's little cost declaring for my subject's war goal, if there's any cost at all, which I don't think there actually is. Yeah, yeah let's do that. And I think I will call in Adal immediately. Let's go and mark oh, all of that as my interest, just so the Adalians know. I will call them in just so they take naval control and maybe deal with Miklav on the way. But either way, that's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go and eat the Dongolans. Take by Yuda as the Wargol. Call in Nadal. And go. And I think I could have... What's this again? It's BBV, right? Yeah. Um, I could have moved myself into a slightly better position. In order to be more... I have an easier time to actually find the Don't Go an Army and crush it. But it's probably gonna be okay. Um, Adal. I 
prefer if you went straight here. Let's see if you're willing to do that. That would be quite nice. Also you, I would like to die. I expect you expect you to die, Mr. Bond. Um Yeah, I'll take the innovativeness. For things that don't matter. Lemon squeezy. And then what? Hey, my ally, please give me military access. It might be that the um, Adalians can't cross because of a lack of military access, which they should now have, which might make them do the right thing. They're still not into it, but I'm sure they're gonna realize eventually how this should work. Also, we don't have the real siege guy on the job here, which is kind of unfortunate, but something we can fix soonish. So that, that, that. You grab the real siege guy, get on there. And then Don't be attachable to. I honestly don't want anybody to be attachable to. That's probably why they got these weird ideas of coming to help. When they really should just go and beat up some lousy folks over there. And they are lousy. Don't be fooled. By their outward appearance, they are freaking lousy. Um ba -da -ba -da. this and then this and this. Juggling those seat stacks, get the right people on the right jobs. Converted the heretics of Go Jam, excellent. So Wolo Lo is next. And we have some money. Can I turn that money into something that makes me more money? Eh. It's probably you. Steel land, not quite yet. Oh, gotta keep an eye on that. Oh, we actually have a lot of room here because of the institution. Wait. So how does this work now? I can be, keep more power safe because of the institution, even though we don't have the institution spawned yet. So I guess that just looks at my technology cost increases that I have. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Still though, what are we gonna do here? It's probably really just the marketplace in this place. Sure, let's rock it. Come home from Kafa, who shouldn't utterly hate me anymore. No, look at them liking me. Tyrant overload. Oh, overload, yes. We have quite the tyrant overload around here. Too many tyrants. Uh, 1502. I guess I pop the diet now. See what they want. Base tanks and four and go jam. I don't want to do that. Base manpower and semi in Maybe, I mean, we have a lot of mill. And mill tech is still far out of time as well. Or make the merchants even happier with some development in Endurta. Hmm. Now the development in Semyon is going to be a lot cheaper. Should be, right, than the one in Endurta. 47 base to 71 base, yeah. Now Semyon is a pretty good place to develop our next institution in. Just because of the capital. We're actually not getting a ton of reduction from it being the capital. So it might just be an okay place. I think we just go with the nobles then. Can we do two manpower clicks here? We can, okay. Encourage development. Clickety, clickety. Complete the thing, gain some loyalty, gain some manpower good. 
now. My friend. Why are you here? I mean, thanks for your help and all, but why are you the frick here? <laughs> We're probably gonna see a McLavin army coming around all the way through Egypt to quote-unquote help. Well, no, they're not gonna help out. They're gonna try and kill, yeah, and you're doing the other way around. So, yeah. Feel free to meet the McLavians. We're just gonna take the short route. <laughs> it seems a lot smarter. And it makes sense for Miklav because they can't cross the strait, right? That makes sense. But for us, it makes no sense. All right, get Siege Boy over here. Yeah, that's artillery, artillery combat ability, not Siege Speed. If it had been Siege Speed, I might have had to consider whether it's better to have pips or Siege Speed. I'm pretty sure two pips is always better than 10% speed. But maybe not. i never done the math on that. Would have been at least an interesting question. But we didn't need to ask that question because, uh, yeah. Are you at war with the McLavians? No. Good. I was afraid they might go and try and take Sana'a there. But no. Get all of this going. That's a level 2 fort, so 6 people necessary, no modifiers. Let's go with 7 then. Are you going to see a clash of Adalian and Miklavian troops somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Mamluk territory? Are we going to see some sort of pa passing of ships in the night? Mamluks paid the front end off. You did pass in the night, you fools. I mean, one of them is a fool. Well... What are we going to do here? Allow attachment. Once you've moved your cannon, it's going to be a special unit. It goes to siege. Everybody else go over here. And we're going to meet up and uh, I suppose hunt down the freaking Miklovs. Oh, this is. No, this is Miklov, yeah. We killed Dongola. So. Can only be Miklavians here. Not to be uh, confused with midichlorians, which are just terrible things. <laughs> uh, speaking of terrible things, we are at 33 minutes once again. So all that remains for me is to say thank you so much for watching. If you do happen, for some reason, to enjoy what you're seeing here, then uh, hitting that like button would be awesome. Uh, obviously, putting a, a comment into the comment section is also awesome. And, uh, I mean, obviously you are subscribed, but if you weren't subscribed, just, you know, I mean, it's just no way you're not subscribed, but if you were not subscribed, then subscribing would be a thing that would be kind of nice for you to do. I mean, it would be kind of nice of you to do it, I suppose. Also for you. Both of the th those things. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for watching and see you folks next time.